So in this video, I'm going to be talking specifically about uh, some indifference of cubes and how to factor them, but I uh, thought I'd put the general stuff up there too, because I have a, an example where we're going to need this. Um, I will probably make a second video that, that gears more towards a couple things to know, especially the continue to factor until you can't anymore. But just the general ideas, make sure that you put it in order, so that you put it in general format. That's going to help you make your decisions. Uh, always factor out the greatest common factor to start with before you do anything else because again it's going to make it easier on you uh, the third one is largely optional with its if you're just beginning it, it's not as optional for the sum and difference of cubes which we're going to discuss today but it's somewhat optional for the difference of squares and perfect square trinomials I have a couple of uh, videos on those you can factor those in other ways so you don't have to memorize those necessarily um, but the sum and difference of cubes is kind of a pain in the butt. So, and then the fourth thing, fourth thing is, is anything left over from the first three steps? You try to factor using grouping, or um, I, I tend to use more of a sign method for uh, if the if the leading coefficient's one, that sort of thing. So, the, just go through these four steps, and the important thing over in the couple things to know besides um, the not factorable part is you're not done until you've exhausted every single factoring possibility. So if you end up having, you know, you get done and you're like, oh, look, I did because some difference of cubes and I now have a difference of squares as a, as a factor, but I'm done. No, you have to factor that too. That, that makes it a lot easier. So let's go ahead and get into the sum and difference of cubes. This is a long one. It's a little bit weird. So uh, I'm going to actually use... What I'm, what I'm saying over on the left to do the stuff over on the right. It'll make it a lot easier, I think. But that's just a me thing. I mean, everybody, everybody has their own. Here we go. Make two groups. So I've, I've already, this, in this first one, I, I've just nailed it down to a, diff, or to a sum of cubes. It's nothing more than that. So I'm gonna make two groups. A binomial and a trinomial. I'll make a small one and a big one. In the binomial, what did you cube to get the front or that leading term? Well, I cubed x. Okay, put that there. What did I cube to get the back? Well, I, I have two things going on, so my 27 comes in as a cube is 3 cubed, and then my y I cubed to get y cubed, so that's how that works. Don't worry about the signs yet. I take care of those at the end because it's, just, it's easier for me to keep track of them. All right, let's see if I can manipulate the colors here. So those step number two and three. So what'd you cube to get the front? Cube that, or that goes in the binomial in the front. What'd you cube to get the back? That goes in the back of the binomial. Now you use the binomial to build the trinomial. So square the front to get the front. Where the back to get the back nine so y squared multiply these two to get the middle so that's going to give us three x y so now we built the terms as far as as far as the values. We built the terms in the bin er, in the trinomial using the binomial. So it's square the front to get the front, square the back to get the back, multiply to get the middle. And it's just kind of a dit, 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 dit. and it's just stupid, so you remember it. That's I had to come up with something because this just it was a, it was a nightmare to have to just memorize. Now finally, the signs. I always leave the signs to last because I have a little ditty for that too. It's keep, change, positive. So everybody thinks that change is a bad thing, but it doesn't have to be, so keep change positive. And that also gives us our sign when we factor. Now at this point, I would have to look at these and say, can I factor it any further? Um, if it is a traditional sum of cubes, the answer is no if you're beginning. 
because, well, it, unless you've had uh, imaginary numbers, you can't factor this other piece over here very easily. Um, so that's how that works. And it's just wash, rinse, repeat. Now, this assumes that you've done, if I go up, it assumes that you've done the first two things. If you haven't, stop. You need to do those first two things. So we're going to do the second one here. But if I, if I look at it, I've got two even numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and at least pull out a 2. x cubed and c cubed have no common factor. So I'm going to pull out a 2 and see what happens. This is going to give me 64x cubed minus 343c cubed. Well, 343 is not even. 64 is made up of only 2s, so I can't factor anything else out. Now, I'm just going to kind of play with that. The 2 is going to come along for the ride, but it's literally going to come along for the ride. So I make a little one and a big one. Now, at the, before you do this, you actually should be checking, are these in fact perfect cubes? I know they are. I built them. But I just that's something you should check. So what did you, what did you cube to get 64? 4. What did you cube to get x cubed? x. What did you cube to get 343? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> it's 7. Uh, and then uh, what did you cube to get c cubed? c. Going through my little ditty here. Oh, let's get a good color. Square the front to get the front. Square the back to get the back. Multiply to get the middle. Then keep change positive. The last one's always positive. So this is just, just something to help you remember it. That's all. All right, hope this helps.